Good morning, good evening. It's Serena Michaels here from the Inlaquette community, bringing you greetings to wherever you are on Mother Earth's skin. Namaste. Um, loving all of you and sitting here feeling a tremendous amount of love and just wanting to send out that vibration to you. Uh, I've been asked to talk uh, very briefly about shamanism and gender. Uh, thank you to the lovely person who raised the idea to talk about this subject. So I'm going to bring you just a little insight from my perspective about shamanism or the practice of shamanism and gender. So a couple of ideas and questions arise up in my mind when I think of this question. First of all, what is a shaman? Or what is shamanism? Second of all, Can anyone be a shaman? Can you decide to be a shaman? Okay, so let's start at the very beginning. What is shamanism? Okay, that's a very big subject. If you look uh, uh, in uh, the internet, you'll find hundreds and hundreds of books and YouTube uh, offerings on the subject. So I'm just gonna talk just a little bit from my perspective I've been involved in shamanic practice for about eight years now, and I've been uh, uh, following a shamanic path for about uh, 10 or 11 years now. So what I first understood when my spirit team began to speak to me that I should uh, study shamanism, like what in, the heck, what in the heck is shamanism? So what I discovered from reading and studying and talking with people and uh, meditating and uh, listening to my own spirit guides is that shamanism is the oldest spiritual practice on earth. Okay, so if you can take a look at any uh, religious practice, any formal religion, any dogmatic code uh, which has been uh, instituted uh, among different cultures uh, and different uh, ethnicities throughout the history of the world, shamanism predates all of it. Shamanism is a relationship primarily. The belief that we are, the world view is the belief that we are all joined together. So what are we talking about? What do we, what do we mean when we use the uh, American Indian expression, all my relations? We mean the plant people. We mean the rock people. We mean the animal kingdom. We mean uh, all the humans, all the stars and planets. Uh, we believe they all have consciousness and that we are all joined together. Uh, energetically, uh, physicists are now proving that this is true. Uh, I don't think I need to go into quantum physics at all. I, I certainly couldn't really with any degree of authority. But I do know this, we are all energetic and we are all joined together. And that what we do and how we think affects each other. So. The idea that a rock is an inanimate object is not the shamanic worldview. The shamanic worldview is that rock has consciousness and that as you are able to sit with a rock, you can actually join with the rock and communicate with the rock. This is true of animals. This is true of plants, trees, flowers. This is true of other humans. It's true of planetary energies, etc. I know I'm repeating myself, but I just want to make it clear that the shamanic worldview is very, very based in this concept that we are all joined together energetically, that we are all um, uh, moving together and growing together in love and compassion, and that we all affect each other. Okay. So what is a shaman? Well, the word shaman is a relatively new uh, word or descriptor that has arrived on the scene. It comes from, I believe, uh, a Siberian tribe. I, I believe if I'm not, I'm trying to remember, but I think it's the Tungus people. I believe it's a word uh, that they, uh, they use to describe uh, a, a broad and, and general category of wise people, people that are called. Um, you don't just decide to do this. Uh, I realize here in the West, uh, that might go against the grain. <laughs> After all, we're told that we can be anything we want to be. However, shamanism is a call. Uh, the call into shamanic practice 
is a call. Um, and I want to say to the lovely person who asked for this discussion, it's not based in gender. Uh, there may have been some people groups that have taught that it's predominantly male or predominantly female because that was their experience in their in their in their uh, people groups. But the call is to spirit, not to male or female. So if you are called, it's irrelevant whether you're male or female. Um, a person who is called into being a medicine woman or medicine man or wise woman, wise man, um, community healer, um, a healer of Mother Earth, uh, cosmic shaman, uh, someone who works with cosmic energies. Um, the call is to the spirit of that person and it's part of their purpose for being here in this incarnation. Okay, so it's not about being male or female. So that's the basic answer to the, to the reason for this discussion. But I just want to say throughout history, and we're talking multiple thousands and thousands of years, um, people have been called to work as healing agents within their communities. Usually they will not go around uh, advertising what they are or what their call is, but their community will recognize them. And by community, it used to be villages. It used to be little towns. Um, now, of course, uh, it can extend uh, worldwide through the use of the internet um, and through the bubbles that you're in, people will recognize if you, if you have the gifting, if you have the calling to do this kind of healing. Um, it's really uh, a very interesting uh, lifestyle because it takes you outside of, of religious practice. It can co coexist within religious practice. Uh, no one is asked uh, to leave behind their religious practice. Um, uh, it's not necessary. You, you may leave it behind, you may not leave it behind. Uh, but the it's the worldview of the understanding that we're all related and that we all work together. So a shamanic practitioner will be able to communicate uh, in a sense like a, as a bridge between the realm of the 3D reality and the non-ordinary reality, uh, the other realms where uh, we, we want to call them the realms of the spirit where you can go and consult with spirits and angels and ascended masters and plant guides and animal guides and um, uh, all kinds of spirit, spirit beings who we are joined with energetically, who make themselves available to give us information. Now the shamanic view is that we are our own healers. So when you reach out to a wise woman or a medicine man, uh, he or she is going to bring you information to enable you to work on your own healing. He or she is not actually the conveyor of the healing. The healing comes from within yourself. Once you have been given the tools and the information that a, a shamanic practitioner can bring to you. So I think that's all I need to really say today. It's really about the fact that it's it's not about whether you're a male or a female. If you're called, and many are called in their dreams, the universe will call you uh, if the need is there. Uh, many are born into a genetic line. Uh, we will want to call it a spiritually genetic line of wise people. Uh, many are uh, experience near-death experiences or uh, a severe illness or a major paradigm shift, uh, or there's, there's a variety of ways um, where spirit can then begin speaking to you. Once, once you've gone through these experiences, you're more open to the realm of spirit and to hear that calling. Okay, so that's, I think that's, that's all I want to say today. I love you guys. Namaste.